Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Steven Maida. Today in this video, we'll be going over our removal section for double collectors and single collectors out of our enclosed KVH conductor bar. And then also we'll be going over our different transfer guides that we have in our funnels and the different tow arms that you will be using on each one of those. Turn off the power before you mess with any of this stuff. I don't, I don't think I have to tell anybody, but I gotta feel like I gotta say it for just general lawsuit purposes or anything like that. To start off with, we're gonna go ahead and go move to these transfer guides right here. This is gonna be a straight transfer guide. What this is, is for straight normal transfers. Um, if you have switches that are just straight in, like interlocks between runways, or if you're going from a monorail system onto a bridge frame, this is what you would use if it's a straight run. This one comes in two different sizes that we normally carry are 63, 100, and 200 amp in stock. And this, this one in my hand right here is gonna be for 63 to 125 amps. Going to the next transfer guide is gonna be our oblique transfer guide. And what that is, is going to be for those, those monorails that are in a curve and there's a, a switch in that curve. And so you can't use that straight edge because it won't, as it's coming right here, it won't align. So what we have is we have these indicators on here that are going to give you the different measurements on here. So you're going to have 30 degree angle, you're going to have 45 degree angle, um, all the way to 60. So you can actually make your own cuts in the field as you see fit. Uh, the next one is going to be our funnels. As you can see, this is way wider. This one doesn't have a floor on there. And then this one does have a floor. Okay. And so this one's going to be for whenever your, your collector is going to be completely leaving out of the system. So if you have a, if you have a system that where it's a uh, aisles of where forklifts are going down there and they're doing opportunity charging and the forklifts are coming back out of those aisles in and out. Well, as that forklift is going to where its destination is, not in that aisle, it's going to have to have a collector that's held up. And then when it comes back into there, this, this wide flange right here is going to make sure that that collector gets in there and, and centered and properly tracks through there in order to make a smooth transition into that. And so there's going to be two different cases on which, where you need to use a transfer guide and where you need a funnel. Um, the way you can know this is whenever you're using transfer guides, you have to maintain a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch air gap. That's either five millimeters minimum or up to 20 millimeters max. So you need to be able to maintain that air gap in between these and to ensure that the collector doesn't dip down. And whenever it dips down, it may get caught snagged and ruin your bar there. If that is capable of maintaining that kind of gap there, then you'll be fine with just our transfer guides and our regular tow arm. Okay. And then it has a five millimeters horizontal flex um, and then three millimeters up and down uh, a lot of tolerance on there. And so whenever, if you can't maintain that, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move you over to our funnels. Our funnels are meant to have bigger air gaps and, and say in areas where we have customers that are in galvanizing that have automation, automated galvanizing systems that go in loops and come back around. They do have switches and everything like that. And, but in those galvanizing facilities, it can be outdoor temperatures basically, and you can have a huge delta change. So you're gonna see those beams come back and forth and that tolerance that is not easily maintained with that big delta change. So what we would recommend in those big delta change areas on those beams that you can't maintain, that is gonna be this also, this funnel. And just like I said though, whenever a system, uh, when the collector leaves the system completely and it's just gonna be free hanging, then that's whenever you would use the funnels also with our flexible tow arm. The way this flexible tow arm works is that it's gonna be bolted to your mobile vehicle. And as that mobile vehicle comes out, this is actually gonna hold that collector up in position. There is springs that allow this collector to move back and forth sideways, as you can see. Does it allow it to go have some flexibility? So it, it's not, it doesn't have to be a millimeter, right on a millimeter. So there is some flex, flexing in there that allows that to go back and forth. Hence why we call it a flexible tow arm. And this will keep it, keep it up in the air. Um, as so nothing can, so it doesn't drop. So, but if you were to get a funnel and you would get this tow arm as it's going through the system, it's tracking straight. And then as soon as it gets out of the system, it just fall down and that would allow your collector to fall down. And then when you go back to get it back in the system, it wouldn't be there anymore. So that's only use the flex, this uh, tow arm for the guides or a regular runway, and then the flexible tow arm for funnels.
just have some flexibility side to side to encounter if your if your machine's not perfectly lined, if your hoist is if your hoist is swaying, if your forklift isn't right on the track that it needs to be. So this allows it to go back and forth in order to counteract that off alignment. Okay, and then so what you're going to see is that, like I said, that fin right here needs to go on the opposite side of the ground bar. Okay, so you have the ground marking and that needs to be on the opposite side. So as it's coming through here, and here's your little sl slight decline in your, in your conductor bar, in your funnel, I'm sorry. It's gonna come in here, it's gonna come like this, and it's gonna catch it. It's gonna come in here, it's gonna be coming towards it, coming towards it, and then boom. But there wants to be a slight decline in that as that's level coming through there and it smoothly transitions through there. So I've already shared some things with you about this, the, how to tell which one you're gonna use between a transfer guide and a funnel. Um, the air gap needs to be maintained at a quarter of an inch uh, to three quarters of an inch for you to use the guides. And if you can't maintain that, we've already talked about how, why you have to use a funnel. If it comes out of the system or has a too large of an air gap to maintain. Um, another thing is though, Whenever you're using collectors, you do not want to use a double collector like this while going through transfer guides. Um, you definitely can't use it for funnels as it's going to fall out or actually the flexible toe arm won't allow it to latch on there. So if you're going to be using guides, you want to have, if you want to have double collectors, what you would do is just have each collector by itself and then you would have two of these toe arms to go ahead and to latch onto each one of them to tow it properly through there. That way as it goes through the guide, it transitions very well and not so rigid with this bar in between there. Okay. And so all of these have their own fixed points. All right. And so the next thing is on, on these funnels, whenever they're being put on there, you want to have a slight decline on the funnel. So you want to, it's going to be higher on this side to here. You want to have five to 10 millimeters decline over two to three meters. Okay. What that does is that helps that collector transition in through there between either funnel to funnel or actually into the funnel if it doesn't have anything close to it. That allows it the, the nose dive into the bottom of that, of the bottom of the, the KVH housing right here in order to make a smooth transition. So read your manual, go over all the instructions on how to install this correctly, and give me a call if you have any questions. Okay, now that we're done talking about these guys, let's go ahead and move over here to where I can show you an example of our, our removal section for getting the collectors out of the enclosed KVH. Because one of the things that we hear is like, how do you get it out of there? Well, here's our solution. We're gonna go ahead and take a, a Phillips head screwdriver. This is a one meter piece or 3.25 feet. And so this is gonna be very easy. You're gonna put this in your system just like I have it right here. And you're gonna come over here to an area where it's accessible for you. This is gonna be our double collector removal section. A single would just be one of these. Um, as you can see, our double collectors are Right here, this is a single, this is a single, and then this is our double. Um, this is gonna be for a double collector. This is gonna have two spaces right here that are gonna allow the double collector to come out. The other ones that we have available are also for just a single collector, if that's what, you, if that's what you're using in your system. And so what this is gonna do is you're gonna have your toe arm. It's gonna be on here, and as you're going, you're gonna get close to this, to this um, first area. And you're gonna go ahead and leave your, your hoist, your crane, whatever you want it to be, you're gonna leave it right there at that position. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and loosen up these four screws, which I already have. Um, and then you're gonna remove the toe arm. There's just a couple of on there, remove the toe arm. You're gonna spread this gap out. Please turn it off, lock out, tag out. Y'all know what y'all doing, but now, Lockout tag out, it's all completed, good. Um, remove the, the toe arm, spread them out all the way, and then bring your collector to there and it's gonna drop right out. So, concept is the same for the double collector. This would just spread out. On this one, you would have your toe arm right here coming. Go right here. And then once it's 
close enough, you can go to remove that toe arm and then you can go ahead and slide it over here. And then make sure these black pieces stay spread out and then it'll drop right out. Boom. So the way to put this back in, what you're gonna go ahead and do is, is you're gonna have to do one side at a time. So you're gonna come over here and you're gonna pinch, pinch these down. And you're gonna go pinch there, pinch there, and then you're gonna go to the bottom back side and do it there. So the first side I'm gonna do is this one. I'm gonna get that started up in there. Second one, make sure this plastic is still staying spread out. The third one, third set of uh, brushes, and then the bass ones. And shift in there. And you're gonna hold some tension on it to keep it up because you don't want it to come on this side and fall back down. So go all the way over there, close these up, secure down with the screwdriver, tighten these up. And you also wanna make sure whenever you go to finally tighten them down, you wanna hold these black pieces, squeeze them together. That way, cause if you don't tighten them, they can come, when you tighten them, they can move out just like that. I don't know if you saw that, but let me push, let me do it again. As you tighten it, it'll start going outwards. Oh, didn't do it again, but sometimes it will do that. So the best practice is just make sure you're squeezing it together when you go to tighten down these screws. And it's not a lot of pressure. Remember, we're, we're dealing with plastic here. You don't want to over torque these. These aren't something that's going to, that's going to need a lot of torsion in order to stay on there. They do have some, they do have water, uh, washers on there in order to keep it tightened down. Now that it's on there, this will give it that floor that it needs to roll over that. And then you can go back, once you tested that out, make sure you test it too. You don't wanna get it all on there wired up and then it goes and then it's something snagged in there for some reason. So you wanna test it without the wires being hooked up and that way you can know it flows through there. So you should just have to put your arm pressure. It shouldn't be forcing it or anything like that. So just make sure you do your, your double check before you go ahead and wire everything up and put your toe arm back on there. Go over all the instructions on how to install this correctly and give me a call if you have any questions. My telephone number is 832-219-4299. If you need anything, you can always call me. My name is Steven. I'm always here for you.